hello there and welcome to our OCT tutorial. In this OCT video, we will be showing you how an actual OCT examination works. Now before we get into the actual scanning procedure, let's break down what an OCT machine does. OCT stands for Optical Coherence Tomography and with OCT, your optometrist can see each distinctive layer of your retina and they are able to measure the thickness of it which can help in the diagnosis of other ocular diseases such as glaucoma, age-related macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. Uh, all this is made possible as OCT uses light waves to capture a cross-sectional image of each retinal layer. Now without further ado, let's get straight into this video. Hi, good morning, welcome. Take a seat please. As a patient, you sit comfortably and adjust the height of the table according to the patient's needs. After which, or we'll, uh, take the eye cover out of the machine and swap the chin and forehead rest. After which, add the patient's information into the system. Okay, so the required information on the patient, such as the age, the date of birth, gender, and name. Okay, so can I get your last name please? Mm. Okay. Chung Kai Chung. Okay. Dao of Birth? 27 September 1999. The patient ID will be auto generated. After which, select the scan type, which in this case is macular cube 512 times 128. Instruct the patient to rest shin and forehead on their individual resting area. Before commencing, instruct the patient to look into imaging aperture, which contains a green asterisk. If you look inside, you'll be seeing a green star. Just focus on the star. <coughs> Start by aligning the crosshair to the center of the pupil. This is known as the iris view. The patient may see thin, bright lines of light, which moves across the field of view. Once the crosshair is properly aligned, press center to uninvert the retinal layer image. After which, press autofocus. Okay, so you can do as normal. After the autofocus has been completed, press optimize. Instruct patient to open wide and to not blink. Okay, sir, please open wide, don't blink. And press capture. Don't blink, don't close, don't blink, don't close. Okay, very good, then back. Now analyze the scans and the results. Show your patient the findings. Okay, sir, come here. And yeah, show you the results. So we discuss the results with your patient. So everything looks fine. Everything looks normal. Uh, all the quadrants are within the green zone, which is the acceptable, the good range. So uh, your eye seems very healthy. common error is not adjusting the table height to accustom to the patient's comfort. Okay, so you rest the Awesome. To solve this problem, 
make sure that your patient is sitting upright and press the buttons at the bottom of the table to adjust the height. It's only because you want to adjust the table from your height. Ensure that the patient is able to sit up straight so and have his eye level at the lens. Is it a comfortable height for you? Yeah. Another common mistake is not removing the eye cover before commencing the test. Okay, so you rest your chin here and rest your forehead here. Okay, so please look inside and focus on the star. Make sure to not move your eyes anywhere else, okay? Another common mistake is that your patient could be looking elsewhere. This could lead uh, to inaccuracy in test results. This can be fixed by asking the patient what color the asterisk is. Okay, sir, can you please look inside and tell me what color is the asterisk or the star? Uh, green. So as you can see here, these are the three most common types of eye diseases that can be detected with an OCT scan. OCT basically means optical coherence topography, which allows us to take a very high close-up of the cross-section of our patient's retinal layers and visual center, known as the macula. So first off, we have glaucoma, which is the number one cause of irreversible blindness in the world. Second, we have diabetic retinopathy, which is a condition experienced by some 347 million people worldwide that, we, that have diabetes mellitus, or otherwise known as diabetes. Last but not least, we have age-related macular degeneration, commonly heard as AMD. It has two classifications, dry AMD and wet AMD. Glaucoma can easily be detected by OCT scan as it can easily access different layers of the retina. In glaucoma, you will see the ganglion cells which is at the inner retina starting to degenerate and have loss of tissue structure. You can also check for damages by looking at the optic nerve head for any unevenly spread bundling of the nerve fibers. The OCT is great for glaucoma as it can differentiate between a normal healthy retina and a glaucomatous eye by comparing the cup disc ratio to see if the ratio is abnormally larger than an average or if the disc and rim area is indistinctly bordered and whether or not it lacks contours or the cup volume which measures the depth of the optic disc which is about plus minus to diopters usually. This is a picture of an OCT scan of a patient with glaucoma. You can see some of the signs that I have stated in the previous slide. Diabetic retinopathy is experienced by only a handful of patients with diabetes, but not all. In diabetes, gauge of blood flows inside the retina can be detected by the OCT, which gives us an idea whether or not patients have the eye disease from diabetes. Density of surrounding foveal area drops with increase in macular zone and total foveal zone. In, in diabetic retinopathy, macular edema is commonly seen, meaning it is the build-up of new fluids in the macula, the center of the retina. It can give rise to complications such as epiretinal membrane with, significant, with high significance, thinning of the retinal retina occurs as well, whether or not the diabetic patient has diabetic retinopathy. It is mainly seen in most patients with diabetes, and the result of this thinning can cause vascular lesions on the retina itself. Here, you can see 
two pictures of OT- OCT scans of patients with diabetic retinopathy. And you can observe signs which I have mentioned in the previous slides here. As for AMD, it is slightly more confusing. Here, I'll explain to you two different forms of AMD. The wet or exudative and the dry AMD. Firstly, for wet AMD, the OCT scan can help to detect any new fluids that are building up in the eye, along with any retinal detachments, bleeding, known as hemorrhages in the retinal layers, and membranes in the retinal layers containing growth of new blood vessels. Also, the OCT is helpful as it either comes in a coloured scale with different colours to indicate tissue reflectivity, or it comes in black and white with variants of grey in it to indicate brightness. As for dry AMD, the OCT can easily detect the most common sign of dry AMD, which are drusens. For dry AMD, juices presents them itself in an atrophic form, which is different from the wet AMD's form of juicen, which are mainly exudates, indicating signs of previous bleeding. Also, OCT can see geographic atrophy, which in layman's term means a widespread loss of retinal tissue structures, and the tissue cells are dying off. It allows a more detailed observation of outer retina and retina pigment epithelium. The changes in these areas are usually linked to dry AMD, which is very helpful in the diagnosis and screening for AMD-prone patients. Here you can see OCT scans of patients with age-related macular disease. Some of the signs mentioned above are present here, which you can see. Okay, we hope you enjoyed our OCT video. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below what else we can do to improve on our video. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you'll be notified whenever we upload. Until next time. Peace out.